Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God and Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. want to welcome all of his glory nation from east to west to north to south to our special presentation of two jarheads and a tulip. Welcome back. Today is March the 29th. It is a Monday. I'm happy to have my sister Amanda Grace, my brother in Christ, Jim Stocksdale with the two jarheads and the tulip. Before I turn it over to both of you, uh, Jim, you're going to be happy. I do have the pen on. <laughs> so do I. Amen. I that got was it my last one. <laughs> and I have my K-bar next to me, just in case, because it is a I war. need a K-bar. I'll get you a K-bar. I'll get it engraved. <laughs> you, I'll get it engraved tulip. Oh, that would be fabulous. <laughs> you do not want to do that with an Italian. <laughs> not give her a knife. Well, give she, her a butter knife. Well, she's in New York and I'm in Ohio, so I think that's safe. But I got to right. pray for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> To chop her celery up with it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A <laughs> good idea. And make garlic bread. And that will be a good use of the K-bar right there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got to have the garlic bread. Got to have the garlic yep. bread. So welcome to Two Jarheads and a Tulip. Once again, there is um, a lot on both of your hearts. So uh, let's kick it off to Jim to start it off. I know the Lord has had you up. Uh, and tense, and I know the Lord has had Amanda up and tense, and um, it's an intense warfare we're in right now. This, uh, thank you, David, and thank you, Amanda. It's always an honor to be with both of you because you're anointed, and I love you in the Lord, and I appreciate you. We love you too. I, um, In over four decades of probably several thousand visions, of probably 20% he's allowed me to, um, to release. This is one that I really don't want to release. He told me a few weeks ago uh, when we were talking, he said, I want you to stop saying that you're a reluctant prophet. And I said, but Lord, I am. And he said, when I call you, I know what I'm doing. And I, we all know that. So I asked him, I said, can I say that I'm a reluctant giver of the word? <laughs> and he, uh, he's good and he loves us. 
I want to thank David and the intercessory team, Amanda and her group, his glory family, and those that are watching. Uh, many of us, we know that we are in a battle. And this week has been so intense, but I, it's not about me. It's always about him. Several weeks ago, he gave me a vision called The Resurrection of the Eagle. And it's a very hard-hitting vision. And it will take me a while to share the visions and the prophetic words. But it is basically ripping the scab off of this festering thing in America. And I believe that Amanda said in the past, if you don't deal with it, it's fine. It's going to come back, or whatever she calls it. The staph infection. Yeah, yeah it'll infection. come back twice as bad. It's going to come back twice as bad. Yep. So last night, as I was talking, the Lord showed me several um, people, a man sitting in a chair and, and others, and, and, and they were having cold water thrown on their head. And I said, Lord, what is that? And then I had remembered that a few years ago, there was some fad that people were taking uh, ice water and throwing on themselves. And I asked Luke about it, and he said, Daddy, it was called the Ice Bucket Challenge. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember seeing those. So last night he showed me, he said, I'm throwing an ice bucket on my remnant today. I, I will say this in love and humility, and I hope I don't start weeping. Can't promise it. Um, he's had enough. It's gone on long enough. And he's given several years to repent. And the people that he wanted to repent and has given the word to repent have chosen to continue in their ways. So today I'm going to release a word that I put on Facebook. If some of you went to the URL. It was similar to what I had to view. And I wouldn't even put it on the paper because it was so disgusting. So I, I'm going to start with the vision, the words. I have a couple other things, and I will try not to take too much time. Uh, so I know that Amanda has a powerful word as well. So uh, thank you again, and, and please bear with me with my English that I'm still trying to learn. And just the sorrow I feel in my heart right now because the Lord does allow me to feel his sorrow when, when he feels bad. I've done more weeping this week in a long time. Um, because his heart is broken. And I didn't ask him this years ago, but he's given it to me. So uh, I should. I'm going to give some definitions first so that you understand. I always like to do my research. Boils, they are called carbuncles. A carbuncle is a red, swollen, and painful cluster of boils that are connected to each other under the skin. A boil is an infection of a hair follicle that has a small collection of pus it's an abscess yeah. under the skin. Carbuncles can develop in other areas of the body as the buttocks, thighs, groin, and armpits. Filled with pus, a mixture of old and white blood cells, bacteria, and dead skin cells. Carbuncles must be drained before they're able to heal. Carbuncles are more likely than boils to leave scars. They must be drained. As an active boil or carbuncle, the infection can spread to other parts of a person's body or to other people through skin-to-skin -skin contact or the sharing of personal items. It's contagious. So the next definition, these that's, that observe us and listen to us, monitor us, these are definitions from Webster's. 
Again, please excuse my inability to pronounce medical terms. The word pedophilia, medical definition, it says it's a sexual perversion in which children are the preferred sexual objects specifically. Others describe as a psychiatric disorder in which an adult has pre-sexual fantasies about or engage in sexual acts with a prepuberescent. These are children between the ages of 9 and 14. The International Classification of Diseases defines it as a stained, focused, and intense pattern of sexual arousal as manifested by persistent sexual thoughts, urges, or behaviors involving these pre-pubertal children. Another definition is pedophile. Defined as a person of 16 years or older who is sexually attracted or engaged in the sexual acts with pre-pubescent children. The vast majority of pedophiles are male, but the number of female pedophiles is still much harder to evaluate given that their deviancy can find outlets that are far more discreet. Pedophiles can be found in all social classes and economic strata, which I will point out in the end. Some of these pedophiles are only attracted to boys, boy lovers. Others only to girls. There's others to both are without the same degree of preference for one or the other. Some pedophiles have specific preferences for children of a certain age span or possessing particular physical traits, hair, face, their constitution, their voice, while others are less specific, if at all. There are exclusive pedophiles only attracted to children. Preferential pedophile, pedophiles who prefer children but who are also attracted to adults or teenagers. And non preferential pedophiles who prefer adults or teenagers but are also attracted to children. And I'll sum it up. Some pedophiles live in harmony with their deviancy, which is to them an integral part of their personality. To others, it is a disgusting element, a source of anguish, guilt, and shame. If you go to the Facebook, you'll see a picture of a similarity of the boil or buckle that the Lord has shown me in the vision. So this is the vision. This was part of a five-hour vision given to me in 2019. And I had said before, I knew it was five hours because it started at 12. And I looked at my clock, digital clock, and it was a little bit after five hours. The Lord showed me a very large, infected looking boil that nearly covered the upper leg of a person. He reminded me of the story of King Hezekiah, 2 Kings 20, verse 1. When he was told by the prophet he was going to die, after weeping and reminding the Lord that he had been faithful with wholehearted devotion, the Lord saw the tears, heard his words, and in his grace, miraculously, allowed the healing of the king. Chapter 20, verse 7, if you want to see that. Isaiah said, prepare a poultice of figs. They still do that today, down south. The poultice is a mixture that draws out. They did so and applied it to the boil, and he recovered. Looking at the grotesque boil, I saw a sword swiftly come down and slice off the top layer of the infected boils. And a repulsive blend of blood, pus, and other fluids began to flow from the severed area like lava flowing down from an active volcano. The stench and the sight made me so nauseous that I wanted to vomit. The 
conflagration of fluids continued to pour and drain from the wound for a long period. This part of the vision ended and it began to speak. But I want you to look, um, all senses in the spirit are actually, uh, Amanda, you know this and, and Dave and others, that the senses in the spirit are actually more defined or heightened than even in the natural. Mm-hmm. You can see Ezekiel 3.3 3, or Revelation 10.10. 10. When John was in the spirit, the Lord said, eat the scroll. Yes. And he said he could taste it, taste it like honey. Mm-hmm. So that scripturally to show you that in the spirit, you can hear, you can talk, you can see, you can taste, you can eat. That part of the vision ended. There's two parts. The Lord spoke. Are you repulsed, my son? And did the disgusting odor make you sick? Rather than mirth and the joyful singing of my young ones coming before me as a sweet, savory incense, the odious stench those that abuse my children as sick of me. Their laughter, talking about the children, has been replaced with cries of pain and suffering. I added the scriptures in it, but he didn't give me the scriptures, but I'm adding scriptures in as he was talking to me. Have I not said there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Luke 8, 17. Have I not said that I am a consuming fire? Hebrews 12, 19. And that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Deuteronomy 9, 3. Listen carefully, my son. My wrath is kindled against these predators and I will come in a consuming fire in my anger and rage. My judgment against those that have harmed, continue to harm, exploit for mammon, and taken the life of so many of my young ones through selfish pleasures and delight will be consumed by fire and slain by my sword of justice. My verdict has been rendered and my execution of justice for the voices and blood that cries out to me day and night will be without mercy and fierce as a lion that pounces on his prey. He then continued the vision. And this is what I saw. From a distance, the Lord showed me a hilly wooden section of the country with about 20 hunting blinds up in trees and about 12 at or near ground zero. I know what state this was in. I had no idea why he was showing me these until I was able to see inside. In each of these little camping thing, tree houses, A child was chained to the wall or bolted to the bedpost and was naked. As I watched over many hours, men dressed in camouflage clothing would approach and enter the blinds. Remember the blinds of these things, like a hunting blind. And began abusing and performing sexual acts on very young children. I did not see these abuses, but knew in my spirit what was being done. He graciously did not let me see that, but I knew what was happening by the cries and screams. The different hair colors, blonde, brown, black, close-cut, afro, etc., and nationalities, the children looked to be anywhere from 7 to 10 years of age. The other units, the 12, that were on the ground, they had a few solid steps that led into them, they were visited by both men and women. The age of these visitors, quote unquote, vary, but most seem to be between 40 and 60 years old. 
although they were only wearing camouflage clothing and no headgear, I was not allowed to distinguish their faces at that time. About a year later, the Lord took me back and I saw many recognizable faces. The Lord then showed me large hunting camps and resorts where the rooms were modified differently for the child secured in each, binded by rope, plastic restraints, and some with small, very small link chains. The same type of excess and abuse was taking place as I was shown earlier in the hunting blinds. From there, the Lord took me higher into the atmosphere where the same atrocities were taking place in regular homes, palatial mansions, castles, and various military and government buildings in their basement. Afterwards, I was shown private yachts and jets where the same crimes against children were taking place. Lastly, at this time, I'm not able to share the blood sacrifices that were shown. However, in some of the places the Lord showed me, I could see that a few small children were no longer alive, still chained to the floor, wall, or bed. The second part of the vision ended. The pulse Repulsive as it was to view the blood and the yell yellowish pus oozing from the sliced boils, this was much more revolting and important. I remained nauseated and drained for several days, and for many nights the images kept flashing through my mind. You can look at Daniel 8.27 where he was shown a vision, and he was sick for many days after. I'm not a Daniel. I'm just telling you that when he shows me these things, it affects me physically and in my spirit. The Lord gave me an understanding of what I was shown. There are places throughout the United States where the pedophilia organization, organizations operate or operates. While many of the products they do not use names, only numbers to dehumanize them, are drugged and purposely caused to be addictive. The predators pay hefty prices to have sex with these prepubescent children. At an additional charge, substantial. Some of the VIPs, the highest VIPs, if there is such a thing among animals, are allowed to film their activities. And if a child should die, as I witness in the vision, then the guest, quote, unquote, has to pay for the future potential services this product would have produced. I didn't ask and want to know prices and all those things, but I know that I saw an exchange of money, large amounts of money in cash, because they had gone too far and had killed the product. These are children to me. These are God's precious children. And these animals refer to them as products. The Lord told me that sex trafficking, pedophilia, and these places are extremely lucrative for the dark state. If impregnated, which in some cases is desirable. The babies are then sold to other parts of the dark state, covens and other players to be offered as sacrifices. When the Lord comes with vengeance and exposes these demonic driven predators, he said the deepness and span of this vile evil when exposed will rock the American citizens, and will extend into other nations as well. The guests, quote unquote, have included and continue to serve the highest ranking officials 
in both the public and private sectors. They include former presidents, cabinet members, past and present ranking and regular members of the House and Senate, the state and federal levels, the highest echelons of the military. I was surprised that many were in law enforcement. I saw police chiefs, I saw sheriffs, and many small towns that were part of these sectorings of The judicial branch from the Supreme Court. I said the Supreme Court. To local community court systems. Every level of business from the smallest sole owner to CEOs of the largest companies in the world. Known sports figures. Hollywood celebrities. Network news anchors and reporters. Clergy. And the list goes on and on. It is the hidden underbelly of America and its worst, along with the killing of the unborn and now those given no medical care for days after their birth. While this does not deal with that, I want to mention two things. Feticide, the act of causing the death of a fetus. And there's another we call infanticide. But you know, it's just like the dreamers. They come up with nice sounding names to cover their devious acts. This is a quote. Partial birth abortion is a term invented by pro-lifers. But after birth abortion is a term invented by two philosophers. I have their name, I won't give their name. In the Journal of Medical Ethics, this is what they propose, quoting, when circumstances occur after birth, such that they would have justified abortion, what we call after birth abortion should be permissible. We propose to call this practice after birth abortion rather than infanticide to emphasize that the moral status of the individual killed is comparable with that of a fetus rather than to that of a child. Therefore, we claim that killing a new newborn child be ethically permissible in all the circumstances where abortion would be. Such circumstances include cases where the newborn has the potential to have at least acceptable life, but the well-being of the family is at risk. By having this child, they want it to die within days of birth, because it could be a burden on the family. So they've come up with a nice name called partial birth abortion, and then after birth abortion. I'll finish out this part with this. We need, we know the Supreme Court is compromised by two and a third person. So we have appealed to the judicial system and our system, judicial system from the local to the top level is corrupt. We need the hand of justice, moved by the prayers of the true ecclesia of Almighty God. He has heard the prayers of the true followers of Christ and the innocent cries of the sufferer and blood of too many of his precious children to allow this evil to continue. His sword of justice is coming as a roaring lion right in the midst of the storm of justice that he prophesied and gave to me in December of 2018. The vision and the prophetic explanation for both parts of the vision ended. I 
I have two more pieces and I'll finish up. I want to quote a world leader. This is not Jim. I'm quoting a world leader and I have the URLs. And I won't tell you this world leader's name first. I'm just going to make a few quotes. Quote, without the moral values that are rooted in Christianity and other world religions, without rules and moral values which have formed and been developed over millennia, people will inevitably lose their human dignity. Christian holidays and celebrations are abolished, are neutrally renamed as if one were ashamed of those Christian holidays. With this method, one hides away the deep moral values of these celebrations. Identity is denied and relevitized, so they want to remove our identity, and you see that every day. I'm quoting from 2017. The excesses and exaggerations of political correctness in these countries, talking about America and others, to serious consideration it needs serious consideration for the legitimization of parties to promote the propaganda of pedophilia. This world leader says, I envision in the future there be a political party that will support and try to legalize pedophilia. One has to reject the right of every minority of self-determination but at the same time, there cannot, there must not be any doubt about the rights of the majority. And that's what we're seeing in America, is you are taking that very small percentage that is supported by the false prophet, the media, and making the nation seem they are in the majority when they are not. The majority of Americans are good people good-hearted people that love this nation, and yet we've been drowned out. Domestically, last quote, it's pedophilia, religious intolerance, or the rationalizing of other similar behaviors once were deemed unacceptable. That's from my world leader, and I will quote him one more time. And I have one other piece and I'll finish up. At Bedell International Discussion Club, these were the quotes. These were to progress about progressive liberals and others. They break the habit of only listening to like-minded people that can't break. Them, while angrily and even with hatred rejecting any other point of view from the outset. I'm going to give you this man's name now, and I'm going to make a few more quotes. Vladimir Putin focused on challenges to Russia's identity and an international context of both a foreign policy and moral flavor. Notice the allusion to Satanism which Putin knows full well has for a long time, been quietly rotting the fabric of America at the core. We see many of the Euro-Atlantic countries are actually rejecting their roots, including the Christian values that constitute the basis of Western civilization. They are denying moral principles and all traditional identities natural, culture, religious, and even sexual. They're implementing policies that equate large families with same-sex partnerships. And they're replacing belief in God with belief in Satan. This is coming from a communist in Russia. The excesses of political correctness have reached to the point where people are seriously talking about registering political parties whose aim is to promote pedophilia, as it said in another speech. 
How many other world leaders would have spoken out about these insidious and increasingly widespread normalization and promotion of pedophilia? Just quoting him backstage. Did Obama or other mass pedophiles, were they arrested? Did either Clinton, did either of the Bushes do or say anything meaningful about the pedophilia epidemic? Epidemic? No, Putin suggests. Have you considered that they may be too heavily invested in keeping it quiet? Doubtless that, Putin, doubtless that Putin would applaud the efforts of President Trump in organizing for the arrest of 1,500 pedophiles on American soil within a matter of weeks of arriving in the White House. Where were the progressives and liberals when that went down? Putin says they were still crying about Hillary. This is what Putin had to do in 2012 because of Obama in office. He passed a controversial bill with emphatic support for the state derma, their political, to ban U.S. foster parents from adopting Russian children in a move that will simultaneously protect a number of them from being shunted into child trafficking operations while also tragically denying many orphans to families. He had to shut it down because that many are adopting children out of Russia, bringing them back to the United States and putting them into the sex trafficking trade. Reportedly, the Russian premier has warned that the ban will remain until President Trump takes care of sex traffic epidemic and lives up to his promise to drain the swamp of pedophile elites in Washington, D.C. It appears likely that an elite pedophile network in D.C. uses adoption to enter children into sex traffic. Hardly news considering the well-known saturation of pedophiles within America's political machine. A couple more quotes and then I'll finish with this other. Not least of all in Putin's speech was a broad allusion to a scathing critique of the one new world order, which amounts to global slavery, as Putin himself explains. We see attempts to somehow revive a standardized model of an unpopular world and to blur the institutions of international law and national sovereignty. Such a unipolar, standardized world does not require sovereign states. It requires vassals. In a historic sense, this amounts to a rejection of one's own identity of the God-given diversity of the world. It is evident that with Obama's evident from the exit from the Oval Office and Trump's entrance, Russia and America had more in common. And he finishes out, he says, perhaps we will see the elite network of pedophiles the Satanists get their come uppance in this lifetime after all. I am not going to go into or mention Comet Ping Pong, but I do want to read a paragraph and it is disgusting. You may not, it's just one paragraph, I'm going to read it. There's no profanity, but it's disgusting. This is a reality. If any of you want to Google, go look at the Rothschild party from several years ago. And they had a Godiva in a casket. The casket was filled with this. So let me read. This character organizes, just talking about the individual, I have it. According to the indications of an occult, ritual called spirit cooking or spiritual cooking, which was a sacrament created by the black magician, Amanda, you know this, Alex Crowley, Crowley, in which menstrual blood is mixed, breast milk, urine, and semen to create a painting. 
and guests who are invited to those preventable dinners. This is the type of stuff that they do. And they put this concoction with a body in it and a party on display as a celebration. Two more, I'm done. 2019, this is in California. 14 miners were among the nearly 50 of human trafficking rescued during a sting operation across California that added 339 arrests, law enforcement officials said. Some of the victims found by law enforcement were as young as 13, while other cases involved children as young as six. The National Human Trafficking Hotline estimates that at least 760 cases were reported in the state of California, just California, 2018. Nationwide, over 6,000 cases of sex trafficking were reported in 2017. And when the Lord talked to me, he said, son, and I saw it, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I will finish out with this, and this is... information that you can find out that is on the internet. It's not something I made up, but I'm going to read just a few names. I could have had 20 pages of this. I'm gonna read these names and finish. Republican Speaker of the House, Dennis Hasper, was indicted on federal charges of structuring bank withdrawals after prosecutors alleged Hazard had molested at least four boys as young as 14, and attempted to compensate his victims and subsequently conceal their transactions. Hazard eventually admitted that he had sexually abused the boys whom he had coached decades earlier and was sentenced to 15 months in prison. This was the Speaker of the House, which was a pedophile. Republican Tim Nolan, Chairman of Donald Trump's presidential campaign in Kentucky, pled guilty to child sex trafficking, and on February 11, 2018, he was sentenced to serve 20 years in prison. Republican Mayor Philip, I spell his last name G I O R D A N O, is serving a 37 year sentence in federal prison for sexually abusing eight and 10 year old girls. Republican pastor Mike Heinz, whom George W. Bush commended during the 2004 presidential election, surrendered to police after bidding to a sexual affair with a female juvenile. Republican activist and Christian coalition leader Beverly Russell admitted to an incestuous relationship with her stepdaughter. Republican congressman, this is the hypocrisy, and anti-gay activist Robert Baum was charged with having sex with a 16-year-old boy who picked up at a gay bar. Republican committee chairman Jeff Patton was arrested for distributing a video clip of a five-year-old girl being raped. Republican benefactor of conservative Christian groups, Richard Dasson Sr., was charged with worry for allegedly paying a 15-year-old girl for sex. Dasson, 62, who is married with grown children and several grandchildren, has allegedly told police that over the past decade, he had paid more than a million dollars to have sex with a large number of young women. And I'll finish out with this. These are no surprises to us. Democrat donor and billionaire Jeffrey Epstein ran an underage child sex brothel and was convicted of soliciting underage girls for prostitution. Democrat New York Congressman Anthony Weiner pled guilty transferring obscene material to a minor as part of a plea agreement for sex 
on sending text Twitter DMs to underage girls as young as 15. Two more. Democratic donor and activist Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. We know that he was arrested. And some of the things that he had done. And lastly, for those that really do not understand BLM, Democrat activist and BLM organizer Charles Wade was arrested and charged with human trafficking and underage prostitution. I gave you those names to show these are police records, federal records, and there were hundreds at every level throughout this nation. So I, I read them. Republican, Democrat, judges, fundraisers, those that claim to be anti whatever, and they're lobbyists, and their hypocrisy, they get caught in the middle of doing the very same thing they rail against. So I wanted to thank his glory family for your prayers, and those that are watching that you may know Christ, you may not, but I want to thank those uh, for the prayers, and this is something that no one wants to talk about. I, I don't, but unless we allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to come in. And we continue to pray and intercede. This disgusting thing will continue. And Rome was destroyed primarily from within. Sodom and Gomorrah. And yes, we are being attacked from the one world order from outside. But we are also destroying ourselves from within. In the days of Christians sitting on the couch and saying, oh, well, it's oh, well, until it's your child that gets abducted and you can't find them in the secretary business or your grandchild or someone you know. I've had since I posted that many that wrote me and they gave testimonies of their own children or their grandchildren and I have never found them again. Others they have found in other countries used as prostitutes. So I thank you for listening, and I pray that the Lord of justice comes swiftly and bring justice for the children that cry out to him day and night. And with that, David, I, I, I give it to you and to Tudor. That is very heavy on the Lord's heart. You don't mess with the children. You don't mess with the children. And uh, I don't know if there's anything worse than that. Um, the, the Lord is working and exposing this as we speak. Uh, many movements are happening, uh, very positive movements that people are waking up to this that a year ago or two years ago you thought that could never happen in the United States of America. It's being exposed. We know we run, they run them through tunnels underground the United States. We know they ship them in shipping containers coming from foreign countries and may have something to do with what was caught in the Suez Canal in Egypt that was going to open up the Red Sea. Uh, 20 to 25 Israeli army medics were flown into that ship. Well, you don't send medics into a ship if they're just containers of stuff. There's humans there. And God is exposing this. He's waking the world up to this. Um, I was talking to Amanda la last night about this. We've had so many people reach out to her and reach out to me how they want to get involved in exposing this, but also to help these, 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 these victims of this just sickness so that they can get their life back, uh, which the satanic forces have taken from them. And God is fed up. It, as you said in the beginning of this, Jim, he is fed up. And uh, the time of uh, repentance is run, it's run out. And grace period is over. Yeah. The grace period is over and judgment is coming. One thing I'll add to this about war, uh, this is a war. This is a spiritual war. This is a war like the United States of America has never experienced. Uh, I remember Chuck Missler telling me years ago that he asked military officials, what's the difference between today 
and the wars that we fought in the Korean War, the, or the First World War, the Second World War. And it was striking. They said, every one of them said the same thing. He said, we knew who our enemy was at that particular time. It was black and white. He said, today we're, we're coming into an area that the world has never seen before. Our enemy is gray. Our enemy is Satan. Our enemy, our enemy is infiltrating every single aspect of the world and the United States of America. Wolves in sheep's clothing. The wolves in sheep's clothing. Exactly. Attack. Remember Abraham Lincoln's and our forefathers said the only way this republic would fall would be from within. And we're being attacked from out and within. But our God is about ready to make a Red Sea moment. He is showing us his patterns. He's showing us the visions. He's showing us his timing. And we pray for them because the hammer of God is coming. Uh, as the scripture said, it would have been uh, worse for them to be tied to a millstone and thrown into the sea. Well, that's an idiom to the second death. And the second death will come if they don't, do not repent. And wow, it's... It's an intense time. Thank you for allowing me to share that. There's a lot, a lot of platforms that want that out there because of the political correctness and people just don't want to, you know, if they figure they ignored it, it's not there. It's on our doorstep. We see Antifa, BLM, we see the division. It's all tied in as a strategy to destroy, and that's what this resurrection of the ego, when I release it, uh, the ego has been wounded, but he's not dead. No. And God is the God of the resurrection. So yep. uh, look forward to that, hopefully, very shortly. Amen. He said he was cutting the serpent. I remember this in one of those the words I delivered from the Lord. He was cutting the serpent loose from around the eagle's feet and its wings. Amen. He was cutting it off, literally. And when the Lord cuts something off, he means it. He's cutting it off. And the irony of this getting stuck in an Egyptian canal right before Passover, the symbolism of that happening, I think, is tremendous. With what we, are in a, we are in a time that I, we all have been 47 years of trepidation because we have ran the course of mercy. And the Lord, when we talk at night, he said, it is now time for Ananias and Sapphira. That, that's how serious he's taken this. Uh, when those two lied, uh, they, they were buried within minutes. So uh, people that have had a chance to repent and haven't, I, I don't want this on you. I wish you would have repented. But God is sick. And when you see the stench of this, this is just part of it, the abortion. And that's why I mentioned it in there, because people will say, well, abortion's bad. There's none of it that's good. It's all hideous because it's from evil. So uh, I'll, I'll be quiet and let Amanda release her word. But thank you very much. All right, we're going to turn it over to Tulip now. Hello. Reporting to duty. Yes, reporting for duty. I want to point something very interesting out to everybody watching. Now you know the real reason why the media and the members of the Republican Party and the left all wanted to blame Russia for President Trump's victory. They wanted to blame Russia because Russia had severely interfered in their business practices by what they did. So say what you want about Putin. In this case, he's right, and they wanted to make him pay for that. And therefore, this is why Russia of all nations was picked. And oh, by the way, Russia has, in the, the public schools in Russia, they have Bibles. See? So, I think there are some stances Putin has taken that are far better than stances leadership has taken here. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at the whole, but I'm saying that, you know, there's a reason Russia was targeted and used as a scapegoat, and it's because they were interfering in their practices. Mm -hmm. And that's all That's all beginning to come out in the wash, praise the Lord. All beginning to come out in the wash. Okay. Um, 
Oh, yes, I'm going to pray in a minute. Yes, I am before I read this word. Okay, I'll pray first and I'll tell you about the word. I'll read it. Some of this is going to cross sect. So some of this is going to be running parallel, basically, to each other, these two words. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth come forth. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, I ask you, fill my mouth, our mouths, with your words. And Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, you fill our mouths, our souls, our spirits, with your words, wisdom, knowledge, revelation, pinpoint precision and accuracy and prophetic insight and utterance, discernment and discerning of spirits, Wisdom, counsel, my power, the reverential fear of the Lord, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, and the joy of the Lord. Let it be sealed by the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay. This word actually came on Passover at 3.15 a.m. finally. I'd been up since mid midnight is when I went into prayer. And the Lord had me, it's interesting, we had it, we, we got delivered, and this is important to this, a new kitchen table and a new chairs, because it's right now the Lord is sweeping out the old. So this was something that, that in a way, God orchestrated. And the Lord made me get back up a few nights prior and said, I want you to anoint that table and chair because I'm going to meet you at that table. And he said this to me. So I did. I was exhausted, but I got back up. I anointed the table and chairs and I prayed. Well, a couple of nights later, I felt the Lord telling me to stay up at midnight. And so I did. And I went into prayer. And sure enough, I not only had a vision, which I saw the number 25, somehow the number 25 is going to seriously come into play with everything that's about to happen because I saw it. I saw that specific number. But this word came after about, I don't know, a little over three hours, this word came. And this is what it says. Thank you, Grace. Praise be to the Lord God, our Father and Creator, whom we cast all of our cares upon, for he cares for us. Righteous judge, loving Father, who sent his one and only Son, so we may live, and to his kingdom there is no end. And the spirit of the Lord says this day, there is a holy song of victory that shall be sung by my children across this land that shall be echoed across the world, says the Lord. The march is on, the march is on, says the Lord. Here comes the rain, here comes the rain, for there shall be thunderous showers that break forth upon the unjust as the storm is passing over the just. And in some cases, shall stroke, and I have in parentheses, strike the unjust next to them, says the Lord this day. So the righteous will stay, the unjust right next to them will get struck. While they remain protected and secure, meaning the righteous, in the eye of a very thunderous storm meant to rain down in full the cup of iniquity, the unjust has so filled, says the Lord of hosts. They have reached the tipping point. They have reached the tipping point, says the Lord. And tip over, that's capitalized, it shall in more ways than one, says the Lord of hosts. For weight is shifting. It is shifting, says the Lord. And weights, millstones, judgments shall be heaved upon them, says the Lord, for daring to touch my firstborn, for daring to even attempt to harm them, for they shall be devoured in their place. The rulers, ayatollahs who hold court, their trusted advisors, men who loathe the things of God and worship a very false principality in whom war is its portion for the wars it seeks to start, says the Lord of hosts. For daring to attack and persecute my children, for daring to poison their minds, weary their spirits, and attempting to mock and belittle, to make them recant, says the Lord. And those I have raised up who call me Abba, that's capitalized Father, shall not recant in this hour, but shall firmly stomp and march on the ground and move ahead, full steam ahead, says the Lord of hosts this day. A full steam, a full-blown eruption shall occur, says the Lord, for much is shifting and moving, and the pressure has built underneath the molten mess the wicked have made upon their molten empires, for it is as vanity and melts in my capital sight, says the Lord. 
In my presence, it cannot stand. No matter how elaborate the plot, the government, the company, and companies of men, they were once thick as thieves, but that's capitalized. Now shall turn on each other, says the Lord, racing to rat, rat is capitalized, the other out. For the agreement has broken upon the wicked plans of Babel. For I, the Lord, am breaking the agreements, and nations shall oppose nation that are supposed to be allies. And the world shall look on in shock as this quarrel arises. However, I, the Lord of hosts, Adonai, say this day to uh, say this day, you shall indeed see the unusual in this hour, as the time of breaking and resetting has come. And what fractures there shall be, oh, and what fractures there shall be breaks all the way up the chain of power and command. Breaks upon the governmental rule and persons in governments of other countries. Breaks in the European Union. Breaks in Belgium, says the Lord of hosts this day. Darkness upon Sweden in order to birth forth the light of God, says the Lord of hosts this day. They are attempting to switch the coin. They are attempting to switch the coin, says the Lord. A counterfeit, a replica has made its way into the fold. A double fall to attempt to seat another Athaliah shall cave and break in the center and the entire lot, lot is capitalized, shall cave as their plan is set, is so set for destruction. Another runaway train, says the Lord of hosts this day, this you shall see. The dross that is laid stuck at the bottom I, the Lord of hosts, am heating up the pot, and it shall dislodge and show itself. All the dross that was deep within shall release and show itself. As the bell tower rings, because one has been struck and fallen, says the Lord of hosts this day. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, what is contrary shall be revealed. The hills shall be alive with the sound of music for watch those countries, says the Lord of hosts. So I think he means the countries that those move, that movie particular had to do with. Germany, shock, says the Lord, shock. And what is set to occur as one of their allies has flipped and has been feeding their experiments and maps, DOS capitalized maps. I have no clue what that means. To the opposition, says the Lord of hosts, watch and see. A roar out of Israel, says the Lord, confusion with the election that shall expose a web that circles through the Palestinians, that circles through the Turks and back, says the Lord of hosts. And one I have anointed shall arise in the mist. He shall be marked, says the Lord of hosts. An unusual event in Israel shall be a prophetic sign of what is set to occur in the nation of the eagle, says the Lord of hosts. For the eagle is about to spread its wings and catch an updraft. Yes, this nation shall mount up, up is capitalized, with wings like eagles and jump up in faith off of what appears to be a cliff and soar where the enemy cannot reach them, says the Lord of hosts. A dam is set to break, a river is set to overflow, pointing to a purging overflow of evidence. As a river, a flood runs through their paper-thin plans and disintegrates their counterfeit documents and validations, legalizations and voter binders that shall unlock and the papers all rush down a river where the entire stack shall be lost. A numerical system with ballots and regions shall come to the forefront, says the Lord of hosts. Right now, my people must not fall into complacency and accept what they see, for it is a trick of the eye, an optical illusion, says the Lord of hosts, and optics are changing, says the Lord. And what the eye thought was truth will switch, that's capitalized, and become a lie, a fabrication, filtered through the media, media is capitalized, the media of imagination, listen to what the Lord says here, and Imagineers, that's capitalized, only one company uses that term, Imagineers. And he says it right here. And Imagineers alike, as Disney, shall suffer an even heavier blow for their part, and shall be struck for their dark arts, and many shall tumble down as they as well 
shall lose their crowns and their wands alike. For I, the Lord, see through their veil of innocence to the clamps they put on the mind, the mass messages they feed a large number of people that have even infiltrated parts of the church and the steeple to help a wicked undercurrent of rule train up a child in the way they say, that's capitalized, they should go. And I, the Lord God, am stopping that flow and reversing the current of darkness that has gotten deeper with time. And I shall pull from the deep the massiveness of their crimes. And that truly at the core, there was never a love for children, but a hatred to harm. And some will even be sent, he says, that this is God's sense of humor here, to the funny farm which is a psych ward, I think, mm -hmm. except not funny at all. Quite a sad state of affairs, says the Lord of hosts. Palaces shall be struck and royalty challenged as to what happened to their members so long ago. Diana is resurfacing in a whole new way, and a key piece of evidence a certain royal forces to the surface shall come too close for comfort, says the Lord. This shall be proven by events that so occur. Israel shall pull something from near the waters that was lost but now is found. They are close to even greater as I the Lord and I the Lord am opening up the earth in this hour and revealing the amazing, the resource, the elements, even the underground experiments, says the Lord. For the earth shall know, all capitals, that I am God, I change not. I am on the throne and the earth is my footstool, says the Lord. Gasps out of Australia. Watch and see. I don't know what's coming with Australia. That's all he said. Watch. Dislodges in the Middle East shall cause enemies. Watch India in this hour, for they are being pulled in. Those who thought they won, says the Lord, shall be sore. Sore is capitalized. Isn't that interesting? Because a boil is really a sore. Yep. Those... Um, shall be sore losers as their fall shall be great a broken neck to that to a broken neck to eli for refusing to discipline his wicked sons those standing firm in the lord and in the power of my might shall indeed shall i indeed bless in this hour vindication that's capitalized says the spirit this whole a paragraph is capitals. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and it shall be executed in this hour, says the Spirit. Hear all you inhabitants of the earth. The Spirit of the Lord shall move and crush the enemy under his feet. As his fist touches down and his spirit pours out, as he shall speak into the earth and rolls of thunder shall you hear, says the Spirit. No, I am, that's capitalized, a mighty God. And that you, my capital children, are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. That's all capitalized. At the blooming of the cherry blossoms, you shall see a major event in Washington, D.C. as a lucrative cherry tree gets chopped down by Washington, or so the tale goes on earth. Know you serve a mighty God. Come under my feathers, my children. Stay close to your father as these events take place. For something is set to break over your land. And there are those who shall truly see the Lord your God high and lifted up. That's capitalized. Pharaoh shall let, capitalized, my people go. And those who choose to attack my firstborn and my children shall feel the squeeze and the pressure in this hour. And there are things that will bust open and spill out. Cries across the land for holiness as I, the Lord, stir up my people, as even the waters shall be stirred up. As my army moves across the land and executes an unforeseen tactic that will indeed begin to break an elaborate chain and short circuit its code. For I am the Alpha and Omega, and I am capitalized the first and the last. I shall have my way, my children, as I proclaim liberty to my people and chains to their oppressors. The apple cart is set to be upset, and as it spills out, or as it spills what the apples were hiding, the matter will be made plain, but plain is spelled P-L-A-N-E. Now he's got addendums here. So thus saith the Lord of hosts in the precious everlasting name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen. Here's the addendums that he gave me. Hearing the monopoly board is snapping. Captains of industry, a civil capitalized war. I'm going to, for the V word, I'm going to use the word shot here. Mm -hmm. 
a wedge shall be driven in the shot market and shall create a vacuum, a money pit that's capitalized, where they shall lose what they have attempted to wickedly gain. A particular ingredient shall bitterly fall upon them who so planned and produced, says the Lord. A molecule has been inverted and it shall backfire. A scarlet letter on companies as fools rush in to produce what alters my creation and alters the body at molecular levels that so change its code. And then the Lord says, last thing, my spirit, uh, my children shall receive the most unique opportunities that others have sought. It shall be placed in their hands to receive the blessing to be a driving force of godly change in many areas and industries of life, says the Lord. Receive it in Jesus' name and follow me in faith into new territory, says the Lord of hosts, hearing Einstein, dot, dot, dot. And that's where the Lord ended it. Amen. That's where he ended it. Exceptional word. Praise the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord, they ran parallel. To a degree, the two words run parallel. Yeah, so when does the cherry blossom uh, blossom in D.C., that late April, early May? Something very strange happened in Washington, D.C., which was the, er yep, the early morning of Passover. When I got this word, apparently when people woke up or the next day, the, the cherry blossoms all burst into bloom overnight. They hadn't seen anything like it. It's like there were no cherry blossoms. And everyone woke up and they were everywhere. And they burst into bloom overnight. So the Lord says, when they bloom, that's when you watch. Mm -hmm. uh, what's up? There's an event that's set to happen in D.C. So. I hope it's the rotunda. What did you say? I hope it's the rotunda. Yeah. <laughs> Those that have watched understand what that means. There are some, I can tell the Lord's got some parables in this word. Okay. Some of the way he's worded some things, so. I, I like that table. <laughs> the ta I know that table. Yeah. I was in, the day the table came, that night, I was in bed exhausted and the Lord said to me, get up right now because I need you to go anoint this table. Because I'm going to be meeting you from at this table. So this is where you're going to get up and pray. We'll call it your 3 o'clock table. Yep, that's my 3 o'clock table because I had me starting at midnight. The reason why he had me do that is because when I was getting up at like 4 a.m., I was so exhausted, I was having a hard time staying awake. So then the Lord switched it because he saw I was having a hard time. So it had me start, you know, around midnight. And go into prayer till it, till it came. It seems to like the third hour. The yeah. Road we watch is something that, or the watch is, is what he is. He loves that. He does. Mm -hmm. But you know, and I don't know if I mentioned, a lot of the time he had told me, I said, why do you always come at night? And he's told me that it has to do with the day, what time you're born during the day. And so I was born at 1.55 in the morning. And so it's a natural time when you birth and you're that coming out of the Father for him to be able to speak to you. So uh, it's interesting that when you're, you're born or what hour it is, is, is tied in with what God does. Yeah. But what a powerful word. And I, I do see that's a lot to unpack. But that's, God has so much on his heart. He did. I said that to John Redenbow too that word to take a look at it also because there was so much there. Well, you're probably going to need to get John engaged in your uh, vision you told me about last night too. <laughs> yes. Because that ties to the other, the other three. But uh, it's fascinating you brought up um, some of these maps and um, you've used the word Snowden before, I think Assange. Oh, the Lord who said, said the word Snowden, Edward Snowden, he said to me, the day before Thanksgiving Eve, I think it was, or the morning of, I heard Edward Snowden, and then he was pardoned. Yeah. Not I, long after that. I heard uh, today that Assange and Snowden documents would w w either are released, I haven't got that confirmed yet, or are going to be released uh, today. Really? 
And it ties into exactly what Jim was talking about in the vision, too, the, the proof of the, of the wieners of the world. Um, yeah. The scam is being ripped off. Yep, it is. It's ugly. It is painful. But it's gone on long enough. That's right. Yep, I still don't know what a DOS map is. So that's something I have to look into. And that a source code? It could be. That's the first thing when you said that, the first thing that came to my mind was Snowden and Assange, a DSO, DOS code, a maps, unlocking the code. That's an older code. Right. And this goes all the way back. Uh, That's to, right, because the DOS system was on it. computers, too, wasn't it? Yep. The DOS system. Yes. Oh, wow. And you go back several administrations of when this stuff. Uh, Poindesta was another I could have pointed out. Brother Poindesta. Uh, you know, they were advisors, and they were exposed. And so their whole lobbying firm had closed. Mm -hmm. um, every facet of society. So... Um, it's when you have those downloads at your three o'clock table and the, the Lord keeps me up until all times of day and night and I don't think I've slept. I've told people right for years. But it is starting to catch up. But it's at the right time because God is so fed up. But he has mercy and mercy and mercy until that's it. And then as, as he had told uh, I, I won't even get a book me any, but uh, there comes a time when he, he shuts off the prayers. Yeah, when when the Lord starts having the Holy Spirit go, hear ye, O inhabitants of the earth, something major is getting ready. Mm -hmm. I've 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 learned that from him saying that only a few other times, and something enormous happened every time mm -hmm. when he's making the announcement to the entire earth. It'd be yeah. interesting because the blossoms you mentioned, I know they're so beautiful. And, and then when they come out, they have such beauty and such degradance there at the same time uh, in, in, in that area. So uh, God's going to deal with it. Uh, but that's probably, and I know you have been there. The Lord has took me and, and shown me uh, what takes place at the bottom of the Vatican, which is part of. Uh, the resurrection of the eagle, which does fly and, and, and spread its wings. Uh, it's an interesting analogy that he uses. The other was when he took me over, I think it's in North Korea, and showed me the di different concentration camps. And I find that just the last few days when he had mentioned that this is a fragile man, this is a shell of a man, this is a hollow man, that we have... Uh, North Korea now shooting rockets off again uh, with nothing said. You know the crisis at the border. So the Lord has to act for the eagle. And we've done what we can in our prayers and battle, but we must stay consistent and continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned, um, you mentioned some of the European uh, countries that are supposed to be uh, aligned with NATO that are probably more against us behind the scenes than Russia is. And that's why NATO was created, was to form against Russia. You mentioned Germany, what they've done uh, to our president and, and, and the fraud in the election to, to take it. Um, Brussels, you, you mentioned. Uh, Belgium. Or Belgium, in Brussels, the headquarters of the, the, the EU. Uh, and Turkey. Turkey threatening Israel. Um, I remember Chuck Missler saying this 10 years ago. Watch Turkey, because as soon as Turkey becomes all Islamic, you know the time is near. And he was absolutely spot on. You know, with NATO, they had alliance against Russia. If one NATO country was attacked, that would be an attack on that, all, the, all of NATO. They have to respond. Uh, can you imagine a situation where Turkey attacked Israel? It, yeah, because of those Abrahamic Accord agreements yep. will be highly tested yep. as to what they're going to do. Yep. And we you know, know 
Turkey cannot be trusted. We know they, they interfered in our election. Uh, that is an act of war. Uh, most people missed that when Mike Lindell did that, 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 that documentary. But Jim and I will both tell you that this is how it works because we used to work at AT&T. On his spreadsheet, I, I believe it was Mary uh, um, Fanning's spreadsheet, on there was Turkish Telecom, one of the IP addresses that went back on the Dominion software. That means the nation of Turkey had their hands in this election. Now they have their hands in the Israeli election. Yep. Well, the other is that we know is coming. I believe the, the age of grace is coming. The six years, the 6,000 years is coming to an end. As he said, the end of the Gentiles. But I, I would keep my eyes on Turkey because they will be one of the nations that invade yes. uh, and, and come against uh, God's the apple of the Zion. The other we have yet to see uh, in Damascus. Uh, the Bible talks about Damascus being no more. Um, that in Syria, uh, that could be a, a dirty bomb. That could be anything that would completely uh, wipe out uh, Damascus. And it is foretold uh, that it will happen. Yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah 17. Um, never has the city of Damascus been ransacked by morning. Uh, a, we, we know a tactical nuclear weapon could take out that entire city. The question is, why would that ever happen? Multiple reasons why. One, Syria, it's well known. That's why Israel continues to attack the Damascus airport, because they're trying to funnel in dirty bombs and weaponry through Hezbollah to attack Israel, so that Israel attacks that. Well, underneath the city of Damascus is where they keep their dirty bombs, too, similar to what happened oh in um, uh, Lebanon. So there's many scenarios where they could strike to wipe that all out. I got to tell you something. Yeah, mushroom cloud. Yeah, I'm looking at this. This Dawn Marie sent this to me this morning. This was sent by someone. Remember, I saw the number twenty-five. Yeah. And I didn't know why. Iran and China signed twenty-five-year cooperation agreement. Yes, they did with Iran. They're now allies. And they said they could shift the whole power of the Middle East. That's an enormous event. That is the red dragon the Lord always shows me as the menace from the north. Many think it's the bear, uh, but the menace is the, the red dragon. And, uh, I've seen the, every time he talks about it, he doesn't mention a name. I just see a very large dragon. Oh, my. And you know when they signed it? The first day of Passover. <laughs> The Lord said there's going to be an exclamation point on Passover this year. He said it, that it was coming. This is just the beginning. We're not done with Passover. No, it's still and, going. Oh, yeah, we're only two days in. But on the day that Passover was beginning sundown, this was announced. Yep. This 25-year agreement had been signed. Yep. Now, I saw the number 25 at, like, probably around 2 a.m. On the 27th, I saw it. And I didn't know why. The news broke at some point during that day. Yeah. So that could have something to do with it. Well, Jim brought up a, a, a very interesting point because he said many assume it's the bear coming from the north. Um, Meshach Tubal, if you actually go back to, uh, it was, it was um, uh, I think it was Wally Schobert, Schobert that did this study. Waleed, incredible uh, scout. He used to be a Palestinian uh, PLO terrorist, became a Christian. Um, he believes it's going to be an Islamic at the end days. He said that those areas of the Bible were part of the old USSR, but they're the Kastans today, which are Islamic. Yes. And it's, it's, I, I find it interesting that of all the world leaders, Bilderberg Group, their counterpart for, uh, they have a, a, a female group like that, that he has poked them many times, uh, even the things I read about, and he mentions the One World Order in a very negative way, whereas we know several presidents ago mentioned a thousand points of light and all, all of those things. So this is all 
coming to a head in my prayer. And my hope is that when he rips the scab and this happens, simultaneous to that, as you mentioned, um, Amanda, that there is coming this day where the rain is not going to fall on the just and the unjust alike. There is going to be a separation of those that have followed me and been obedient and been through the trials and those that are of the Laodicean church. Uh, it's coming, that separation within the structures. Uh, that will be dissected when I talk about some of the structures and denominations that uh, sadly it's like Ezekiel, you go in and see and the Lord shows you what's going on. And on the outside, it looks like one thing, but on the inside, it's another. And, and I'll give you one part of it just as, as a thought. He gave me three distinct areas, but one of them, all he had to do was show me a Boy Scout, an Eagle Boy Scout. And I, he said, start looking and viewing that, that even the Boy Scouts, you know what all they've done with uh, the Rainbow Coalition, but they even changed the Boy Scout oath and took God out. Mm-hmm. Now the Boy Scout oath just said, do good for your community, whereas before it had gone and, and people looked at the Boy Scouts for years when I was growing up as uh, it's, a, it's a great area, the Girl Scouts, the Brownies, and they have completely infiltrated that story. So there are aspects of it that people don't think about. Yeah. God keeps a pulse on everything. Mm-hmm. He sees all of it going on. So. His record. Yep. He's exposing their symbols their, that have been right in front of our eyes forever, whether it be Nabisco or Disney. Uh, Disney CEO resigned last week. Yep. Uh, their numbers are going through the roof. People are, because of the, the, the virus and sick of the sports, are turning off the ESPN. Um, their numbers are going down. They're being exposed. Um, so that's one of the seven pillars God is, is judging. This is why that this move for what happened now and with with that hideous sneaker, yep, is such a calculated move mm-hmm. of the occult. I'm see- yeah, blood in the sneaker is that what you're talking about, Nike? Yeah, apparently now Nike is panicking. I only know this because somebody sent this to us. Yep. They're panicking and saying we we're not behind the shoe. We sold this shoe to a third party. And we didn't know they were going to do this. Mm-hmm. So Nike is in a complete panic now mm-hmm. because they're tied to this. And in a way, they got maybe shystered in well, this they, Nike. They are as steeped in it as you can believe. I'm sure they are. And they're, at, they're playing innocent. And you know what I mean? They are as steeped in it. I had a view into them and to Adidas. Yep. And I, I can tell you both, you know, because Reebok was bought by Nike. Yep. And I Both of those, he just gave me. And if people, I think, interesting when a prophet says something and they want to challenge it, that would be the last thing you want to do. That's because right. prophets are given details, we're given dates, we're given names, we're given times. Uh, the Lord knows everything. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get in, in, into that with the Lord on exposing corruption. And you pull in a denial. Uh, talking about the X-Files, God has a file on everything. And downloads it to his two prop, true prophets and seers. So we're in that area. I will say this, uh, and I know it's a it's a very um, sobering day for me and a very difficult day. But uh, I wanted to let David know that there are sales of a particular cookie uh, that he had um, put a diagram of that had probably now fallen. <laughs> um, one of my Marine Corps friends said, "I love those cookies because I baptize them in milk." I don't know if he baptized him in milk anymore, but um, I have never seen such an over uh, to eat a cookie from that particular company that you mentioned with all the signs of the Illuminati, all the signs of all seeing eye that are right there on the cookie. Yeah. Not my ding dongs, as I told you, man. (laughs) Please, not the ding dongs. I think they're (laughs) safe because there's no design on them whatsoever. So I think for now, as long as who does does Drake's or Hostess do the ding dongs? I don't know. If you're watching Drake's or Hostess, don't put a design. That's right. On the ding dong, don't a, do it. Put a cross. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the only time you should be putting on them. Speaking of that, his glory is, is, is this is the Nike, Nike tied to the NBA, is tied to China. Yes. Uh, it's tied to uh, college sports. All of this is going to be a scandal that will come out. I know people that have China tapes on basketball players, Nike executives, uh, people in colleges. The whole house of cards is coming down. It's not if, it's when, and we're getting closer. There are tapes, and they will be revealed. I know who has them. Amen. <clears throat> it is Amen. sick. It is ugly. Speaking of that. We're going to, we're, we're praying because there's a couple people that have approached his glory about coming up with his glory shoes. So if you're a shoe company, reach out to us because it's time to have the glory of God on a shoe. Charge your feet with the preparation. That's of right. The gospel. No more Nike, no more Adidas, none of this. Let's, let's shine for his glory. And I'll show you this shirt actually says what's happening. This one that we have. Yeah. It says. What you have and I don't glory. have yet. But Mr. Jim came up with it, with uh, this. He got this inspiration from the Lord. So the sun is rising on the eagle, but sun is S-O-N. I love it. So that is true. That's the only reason why this pertains to us. That's the reason why I have the shirt here, because it pertains to what we're talking about. But the sun is rising on the eagle. That sun is key to this prophecy. I'm Amen. telling you, with this vision I've seen, you are going to... And, and God will probably give you a download to parallel it. Uh, it's it, it's meat though; it's not milk. But yeah. I, you know, I find out, and, and if I can just one more thing, we get so many questions. And a lady did ask me. She said, "What is the ecclesia you keep mentioning?" And we say these things, and, and often we don't realize people don't know what that is. Uh, the ecclesia is actually a political term. Uh, used for the uh, Sanhedrin and also the Senate in Rome uh, because they were assembly of lawmakers. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus said, I am going to build my ecclesia, he didn't say a church. The true translation is ecclesia. He was telling them, I'm building my legislative body on earth. And they hit the roof because they knew what that meant. Yep. Uh, binding and loosing and the authority is restored back on earth through those who follow him by the blood. And so for the ladies that had asked that, um, there's your answer on the ecclesia. It's also called it the ecclesia. So. Yep. And talked about again, where we're at. <clears throat> we're in the, we're in the seventh of the church age. We're in the church of Laodicea. Uh, as Christ said to his seven letters to seven churches as warnings that literally filled the church age. We are in the church of Laodicea where he says, you're neither warm or you're not, neither hot nor cold. I, you're lukewarm. I vomit you out of your, uh, your, my, my mouth. So that's where we're at. Neither, you know, hot or he wants somebody on fire. However, you go back and you read the, the church of Laodicea. What's Jesus doing? He's knocking at the door of the church, the supposedly church. Well, the church is taking Jesus out of the church. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and yes. if every, any they man took open, it. I will come in and sup with him. Yep. He's not in the church. Well, you remember a song of Solomon. When he came calling, she said, I don't want to get out of bed because I'll get my feet there. <laughs> and he left. And then she had to realize, oh, he left. My lover has left, so she had to go out anyway. But her excuse was, I don't want to get out of bed. I'll get my feet there. So... That's a typical female response, too, which is kind of funny because, you know what I mean? Squeamish, you know, you've got squeamish females and then you've got females that are like, you know, roll up their sleeves, you know what I mean? So that's interesting. Yeah, that was when he said, my love, and she said, but it is parallel to the church. I'm, I don't get dirty. I, I only get involved with this stuff. Yeah. Yep. It's too controversial. It's easy for me to sit back. And what has happened? The public school, the judicial system, and all, you know, those things. And I know that uh, we were given some statistics, and, and it's, it's still going to stay with that individual who's our friend. Uh, but one good thing, as Luke told me this morning, he said, you know, Daddy, homeschooling is going up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and, and in some of these homeschool curriculums that his glory is going to be working yep. on, uh, it's back to the real history and scripture as well as advanced learning. Yep. So. And there are many people that are working to put this together, uh, homeschooling. We did that with Creed. Uh, my, my wife started this last year for the first time. Um, 
Uh, Sam Sorbo, actor Sam Sorbo, Kevin and Sam Sorbo uh, will be on his glory. Well, actually, we'll be taping him for a future show tomorrow. But Sam has done an in incredible, uh, put an incredible program to homeschool uh, for, for uh, people around the nation and to do it Christ-centered. And we need Amen. more of that. Amen. They're not, they, they're saying in Texas that the internet learning uh, that the test scores are just going down, down, down uh, from internet learning and not being in school. And a lot of it is teachers just refuse to go back to classrooms in, in a lot of these states. So yep. And, and I love teachers, and, and I, I admire them, and I understand the, the potential of giving COVID, but um, they need you. Uh, these students need to see you and, and have your gift of teaching, so God bless the teachers, and I pray for you and those students. Yep. Yeah, we want to make the two things abundantly clear to our audience because they always they, they take one part of it and sometimes they didn't hear the rest of it. First, with teachers, there's many great teachers out there that love the students, love to do to teach. The the problem is not the teachers. The problem is the teachers' unions. The corruption has got into the unions to control and handicap the teachers. The other thing is we continue to talk about this Vatican that is going to be exposed, which will be horrible for the, for the Catholic Church. Now, that doesn't mean every single Catholic is bad. We love our Catholic brothers and sisters, but it's Christ plus nothing else. And um, it's, the, it's the top that's rotten and literally the bottom of the Vatican, which is beyond rotten. You are right. I've been under two of the Vatican. It, it is. There's, in this vision and revelation, it wasn't only the Vat, you know, Catholics, which we love, and there are millions of them. I know that General Flynn uh, was a guest, and he and Lori, are, are, they love Jesus and, and, and their Catholic background. But I, I was raised Baptist, but my good Baptist convention uh, is debating whether the scripture is holy and infallible. The Methodists have almost divided in, in, in most areas because of allowing uh, people behind the pulpit that um, practice social behavior that does not line up with scripture. So there's a lot more to it than just that group. That's right. It, it's every one of them. Yeah. So anyway, thank you again, David and Amanda. I, I just... I'm always amazed and thankful how God can blend it together and then do it to bless this Troy family, which is such a unique group of people. And, there, and it's being added hundreds and thousands uh, are finding they don't go to church. I find that a lot of people are just not going to go back to church. They say 30% of clothes will not return. But they're finding his glory from different ways, and his glory is the church. Yep. And then they'll do a Bible study. Yeah. I believe that that unity, the Bible study, the Holy Spirit falling, caring for one another, I believe that's what the Lord, it's, it's nothing wrong with churches that need it, but there's a lot that won't go back to that structure and have been, become accustomed to their smaller groups of 20 or 30 and are very happy. Yep. We, um, not only does the His Glory Sunday service hit every country of the world, literally, um, we have many home church, home churches that are uh, b doing their own Bible study, tuning in to Sunday service. We see the numbers through the roof. If we were a normal church, it would probably be the biggest church in the United States of America, just on viewership. Yeah. It's amazing the growth, and it's not me. I'm a small part of that. I'm just reading the word for word from the Lord. You see Mama, His Glory. You see the praise. You see Creed, as simple as a child. You see Vicky opening up in prayer. It's a, it's a complete team effort. And even Amanda, being on our board, has agreed that when I need a week off, she's going to come on and yes, give the I, message. Yes, I agreed to guest host an entire week so he could have a, a, a needed break if he needed to. I have agreed to come on on days he needs. Yeah. Yes. That's what, that's what a great sister does, right? It is what yep, a little sister does. That's yep. right. Yep. Absolutely. So once again, we've come to about uh, an hour and 40 minutes. Um, any last thoughts about today's two jarheads and a tulip? It's going to blow. <laughs> it is going to blow. <laughs> That's my final thought. Yep. It's going to erupt. 
my heart goes out to the people that it's a hard message, but there's a lot of people that this has affected. It does. And I, I want you to know that I, I wept a lot this week, but the Lord is very saddened over it. And uh, David had said earlier, um, for the Lord to be able to do spiritual healing and, and other ways to help those that have been traumatized. And I know there are groups out there that, that rescue these out of these rings. Um, but we, we give these and, and the Lord burdens us uh, and we pray. And it's astounding the number of people that are affected by this or um, children that need Jesus and maybe are not. You know, uh, just some of the testimonies we get and some of the prayer requests uh, breaks our heart. Yeah. We're, we're thankful and his glory is there in the accessory team. And, uh, Mama Glory does a great job and I'm, I'm thankful to her and, and the people that are sending in prayer requests and these uh, revelations uh, for the supernatural mm -hmm. which uh, we, we look forward to on Thursday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 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 Who would like to close us in prayer? Want me to do it? If you want to do it, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. All right. Because then, yeah, that's your part for today. All right. I'll I'll, I'll lead okay. us in prayer. All right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just come to you with our hearts wide open. We just give you all the thanks and all the glory for everything you're doing in your kingdom. I know sometimes it, it's hard for people to be shaken, to be awake, but it's time for your ecclesia to wake up, the assembly. Christ the head, we are one body united in you connecting the thumb to the toe to the foot, all of us working in our own part what you have designed for us to be one, your remnant, to glorify your name from east to west to north to south. It's a time to roll up our sleeves. There's a lot of work to do. We got to get off our couches. We have to move forward for your purpose in your glory because things are about to change in the spiritual realm and things are about to change in the physical realm. And as we always say, God has it and light wins. But truly, your, sin, your son conquered sin on that cross as we go into this holy week and look at that victory was accomplished through your son. You gave up your only begotten son for us. And we are so humbled and we're so thankful that if there's anybody out there that has not taken the name of Jesus Christ on their heart, we ask you to ask the Lord in your heart today. Jesus, please come into my heart. I ask for forgiveness of all my sins, past, present, and future. And I make you Lord and King of my life. If you said that prayer and you opened your mouth and expressed that, and you took him into your heart, you've opened up to a new relationship with him. And now it's starting the time to walk with him. Walk with him for your purpose that he's given you for your life. Because it's only how we finish the race that matters. And all we do is for your glory, Lord. And it, the, it is our love for you that compels us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you again. Thank you. God bless you. And till our next uh, two jarheads and a tulip. Amen. Amen. That wraps up our two jarheads and a tulip. We pray that the peace of the Most High God through His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, on this important, incredible Passover Holy week, go in the shalom because God does have this and light does win. God bless you all. Extreme terpenes incorporate all the vital components of the industrial hemp plant by sourcing organic ingredients from the flowers, seeds, and stalks of these God-given plants. All of our products meet or exceed the 2018 U.S. Farm Bill requirements. 
Obey is leading the way in restoring past remedies for essential solutions with clean and simple, natural, organic, healthy choices. Thank you for your support as it helps fund many of the His Glory Ministries Benevolence Projects. Because of COVID-19, the air we breathe and the things we touch are no longer safe. Shared air and surfaces harbor risks due to COVID and other pathogens. But with active pure technology, air and surfaces can be purified and disinfected quickly and safely while you share and occupy spaces with others. Active Pure is a patented advanced active form of PCO technology. It works by creating and propelling safe and powerful disinfecting molecules into the air in a room, which quickly seek and destroy pathogens everywhere. Active Pure molecules work by piercing the shell of a virus or bacteria to destroy its living environment, thereby preventing it from replicating or doing harm. Active Pure technology is designed to use the law of gases to carry its safe disinfecting molecules into every nook and cranny in every shared space. The law of gases is the reason that the smell of microwaved popcorn immediately spreads through your entire home. These odorless and invisible Active Pure molecules fly through the air from our portable or installed Active Pure products quickly and safely destroying pathogens in the air and on surfaces. Active Pure is very different from other technologies that take a passive approach and require that the pathogen be pulled into an inefficient filter, UV light, or plain PCO mechanism. Active Pure does not wait to see if by luck the pathogen is captured. It seeks and destroys them quickly, wherever they may be, in the air you breathe or on the surfaces you touch. Active Pure can deliver measurable and guaranteed results, giving you the peace of mind to know that you are providing the best protection for the people you care for. Active Pure technology is used in hospitals, state houses, and other shared facilities across the world. It is proven by science and validated by multiple third parties. Active Pure is not too good to be true. Welcome to His Glory Nation, where we bring you the word of His glory. We do it through our His Glory Creed. Number one, the Bible is the literal and fallible word of God. Number two, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Number three, we're led by the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Number four, we have the Father's heart for the lost, the poor, the elderly, the widow, and the orphans. Number five, we're here to serve Him in ministry. Number six, in everything we do, we glorify our Lord. It is our love for him that compels us. And number seven, the five-fold ministry. According to Ephesians 4.9, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. Visit us today at www.